Hey folks, sometimes the beginning of games can be so frustrating. You have the wanderlust and want to explore everywhere, but you lack the resources to craft weapons so enemies are harder. And then you grab every resource possible because you don't know what to prioritize. All of that is going on while you're trying to figure out the general gameplay. Or is that just me? In this video, I'm going to present some tips and tricks I wish I knew about Enshrouded, particularly in the beginning of the game. So listen up, folks. I'm trying to save you some time. Upon waking up from your survival pod, you are released in this gigantic open world and your first quest is to craft a flame altar. The flame altar marks your base location and it becomes one of the respawn locations after you die or when you load back into the game. Since the altar is a mainstay of the game, here are some things I wish I knew earlier about the flame altar. Let's say you got caught up traveling and you may be lost. Did you know you can teleport back to your base if you want to start over? If you open your map and click on your base, you can select fast travel to get home quicker. This is such a time saver. However, I would not recommend fast traveling out of a confrontation with more advanced enemies. They will interrupt your fast travel and it'll cost you your health. In a similar way, let's say your inventory is full, but you need or want to continue exploring somewhere. You can place down a flame altar, fast travel to your base to unload your inventory, and then fast travel back to where you want to continue on. All you need to do is extinguish the altar if you don't want to place your base there. If you interact with the flame altar, you will read that you can strengthen and upgrade it. I would recommend focusing on strengthening it because doing so will increase your time in the shroud and unlock character attributes. If you've ever reached a good vantage point in this game, you will see that there are two types of shroud, blue and red. The blue shroud is safe for your skill level and the red shroud isn't. Like, there isn't any way that you can attempt to survive the red shroud. It kills you instantly. So avoid the red shroud at all costs. By strengthening your altar, you unlock character attributes. So as you advance your character and your skill level, the areas that were once a red shroud will turn blue. It's like you unlock new areas on the map based on your skill level. The altar means you are protected by the shroud. This means the shroud will not encroach on your altar area. Nonetheless, you can upgrade your altar and it will increase the area in which you are protected by the shroud. It doesn't mean enemies won't enter your base area, however. They will, and I'm sure it could be more problematic as you get into areas on the map that have stronger enemies. The area that is created by the flame altar is the only place where things don't regenerate. So if you cut a tree down to build your base, it's gone forever. As a side note, the general consensus seems to be that items and resources will regenerate every two hours. Once you set your first altar, the next quest is to find the sleeping survivors. The survivors are basically your advanced workbenches. You will be asked to rescue the blacksmith, the alchemist, the carpenter, the farmer, and the hunter. And I'd recommend trying to get all of them as soon as possible. The survivors will unlock new recipes and quests so they help to progress the game and they complement your character skills. What I mean by that is if you like melee heavy combat as your gameplay style, the blacksmith will be able to create and upgrade your weapons. The hunter will help you upgrade your bows and arrows. So depending on your gameplay style, the survivors or the advanced workbenches will really help you hone in on becoming a master at the type of gameplay you want to play. Next, let's get into crafting and resources. So to start, break everything, like seriously break everything. It will be obvious to break barrels and other wooden containers, but you can pretty much break everything in the game to get resources. I found metal was hard to find at one point, but in the areas where your survivors are, there are a few metal containers, and if you break those, you get scrap metal. You will find an anvil in some areas, and it acts as a repair bench. So if you have melee weapons that are degrading, you can interact with the anvil and repair the weapon. Thus, there is no need to travel back to your base to do the repairing at your workbench. Water is sort of hard to come by, especially if you are relying on finding water by breaking stuff. But if you see a well, you will be able to pull up at least five containers of water. 
you will find that resin is needed early on in crafting. You may or may not get resin by chopping down trees with green leaves. However, did you know you are guaranteed to get resin if you chop down the trees that have the yellowish leaves? This is literally something that the developers disclosed. I would prioritize gathering resources to craft the workbench, construction hammer, the axe, pickaxe, glider, and the grappling hooks. You will find that you will need some specialized equipment to get resources in order to craft more advanced tools or weapons. An example is after you rescue the blacksmith, you need charcoal to construct the forge. To make charcoal, you need dirt and wood. So while you can find wood nearly everywhere, you can only acquire dirt by crafting a pickaxe and using it. Having grappling hooks early on means you are able to explore areas that would otherwise be inaccessible. Not only that, but you can cross the Braylon Bridge using your grappling hooks instead of passing through the shroud every single time. The glider is also a means to travel faster and skip over swaths of the shroud. The glider also serves as a fail safe to prevent you from accidentally jumping to your death. I cannot be the only one that has found out that you can and will slide down steep slopes, right? Right? Rest of the things I couldn't really categorize, so let's call it miscellaneous. Think really carefully if you want to be an archer in this game. I had to, and I choose to be an archer in almost any game wherever it's possible. As the game is right now, your arrows are a one-time use. So since you can't reuse your arrows, this means you are running around gathering twigs nearly constantly. I'm not there yet, but you can plant bushes once you establish a farm, and that should remedy the constant effort to find twigs. But again, I thought about reconsidering multiple times just because you're constantly foraging for twigs. You will find rune stones and these are usually on enemies in the shroud. These will help you upgrade weapons so hang on to them. Another way you can get the rune stones is by salvaging weapons like the rusty sword that you commonly loot off of the shroud zombies. If you have crafted a chest for extra storage and open it up, there are two things that make life so much easier. Hit G and all your items will be sorted. That means that if you inadvertently place berries in two separate slots, by pressing G, those items will stack to their full capacity. Also, if you have items in your storage chest and the same items also in your backpack, hit Shift R and all the items that are in your backpack will be moved to your storage and stacked with similar items in your storage. There is fine print about all this, but you know, sometimes you just don't notice those things. And maybe you haven't noticed that yet either. If you are running out of time in the shroud, you may be able to save yourself if you find this light as it will restore your time. If you take some time for wildlife viewing, you may be able to get a free meal. If you find something interesting, but you don't have the tools, or maybe you want to explore it later, you can set a waypoint so you can visit that place later on when you're ready. Get the double jump ASAP. It will help you reach high areas, and in some cases you can jump over walls that you normally would have to climb, and that way you actually save yourself a ton of stamina. It is better to drink your shroud potion before going into the shroud, rather than using it when you theoretically need it. The reason is because the potion increases your meter to overall extend your time. It does not add to it. The potion's effects last for 45 minutes, so it's not like if you die while the potion is active, its effects die with you. It will stay active for 45 minutes. When you die, there is a marker on your map that shows you where you died. If you revisit that marker, you can get your resources back. For the most part, the tombstones seem to disappear at some time, but I have one that is located at the Elixir Well and it's been there for a couple of sessions. So I am not sure if that one is staying there because it's in a quest location and the other ones disappeared because they weren't. Okay, I think that's gonna do it for today. Again, these are tips and tricks if you are just starting out in the game, things that I wish I would have known or paid attention to sooner. I plan to add to this list as I progress through the game and as updates change these. My name is Heather and thank you so much for letting me put my game on for you. Like and subscribe if you wanna hear more from me and we'll see you in the next one, bye.